Okay, I've mentioned before, that's the dog snoring behind me, it's not me. I'm going to make this quick, do a quick little video recap as I'm building out this Visual Studio Code course. I don't know why I'm writing a course, I'm bloody learning this thing as I go along. It's uh, very good, I've learned a lot, and I'm actually, as I'm writing down these little lessons, stroke notes for me to recap to myself, I'm learning so much, I'm actually going back and fixing my own instructions and enhancing them, so expect this course to change dynamically as time goes by. But I want to make this quick because it is 3.30 on a Saturday afternoon, which is time for me to go outside and start some day drinking. <clears throat> Get this last bit of a, the late, late summer, early wintry, autumny sunshine inside me with a cold beer. But I am definitely waffling, so let's have a quick look. So what have we covered in these first two uh, lessons for VS Code? So we started with a lesson talking about how to download and install. I don't need to recap that because I'm running v VS Code, you can see over here, and I'm sure you've done that. Those instructions are pretty easy. Going through the open source package management using client access, IBM I Access Client Solutions, is pretty straightforward. And in this page, I end up listing every single piece of open source that you need to install onto your IBM I system. That's very straightforward too. The next lesson is developing on my local machine. And what I talk about here is the VS Code setup. So um, why don't I just dive into that and give you a quick recap. Let's do it. Okay, here's my good old fashioned green screen. I'll get this out of the way. The next video I'm gonna do, we're talking about um, paths and dot profile and dot bash and all that stuff, which I've just learned about and fixed one of my problems, and I'm gonna share that with you. But for right now, here we are in good old fashioned, uh, oh, good new fashioned Visual Studio Code. Let's take it right from the top, shall we? Let me close VS Code down. Hello, robot chicken, how are you doing today? I'm okay, thanks, Nick. Let's launch VS Code. This is, this is what's happening to you, right? You launch VS Code for the very first time, and you're gonna click on your IBM I icon over here on the left hand side of course you could have a dark screen you know all that stuff blah 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 then you're going to click on the server that you want to connect to in my case i'm going to click to my machine here it is connecting down the bottom right hand side ching, 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 ching. while it's running all those checks if yours throws up any um guided messages like oh i've noticed that your blah 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 file isn't set up would you like to configure it i suggest you just say yes Code for IBM I knows what it's doing and it's very helpful. So agree with it while it's doing it. When it's finally done, you will see something like this. This is our good old traditional object and IFS browser within um, uh, Visual Studio Code. I wonder if I'll edit out all of my ums and ers. I think I'm gonna leave them in there just for giggles. So here's my object browser where I can look at libraries that I'm playing with. Here's my Nick Litton library with all the stuff in there. And here's my Nick Litton source file, the IFS version of things. And this is what I want to sync from my local PC, right? This is the, within my Nick Litton, there is a deploy folder. This is where I'm gonna be deploying things from my PC up to this IFS so it can run compiles. Let's have a quick look at that. But I'm gonna show you one quick thing. When I click IBM I icon, this is showing me what's going on in the IBM I. When I click this top left hand explorer, this shows me what's on my local PC. And Project Explorer is this lovely other IBM extension, which kind of glues it all together. So while I'm playing here on my local PC, Project Explorer, by clicking this little cloud icon, will happily take whatever's on my local PC and sync it into the deploy location in my IFS. So I have to click on the OBI icon, and here's a folder. It's I just called this folder deploy, right-clicked and said set deploy workstation location. So everything that's in my local PC lands in here. Here's the source file with that hello world RPG on, you just saw on the screen. I find jumping between those things is, is pretty tricky. So what I tend to do is I've got a nice fat wide screen here. I've just got a big enough font on it. So hopefully you can see it good in the in the video. Um, I open a, a panel on the right hand side. So go up here and click this toggle secondary panel. You'll have your secondary panel open with whatever you've got up here. I pick up the IFS browser by just clicking and holding the top of the IFS browser and drag it over here. So I can now see my IFS location on the right hand side. The lovely thing about this is when I click on my local 
Object Explorer, look, all on one screen, I can see my local files, I can see my Project Explorer, I can see my IFS. And whatever I change in the code, let's add a comment in here, right, just for the sheer hell of it, something. Here's me adding a line of comment to my local Hello World RPG, and I'll save it. Now, so my local program looks like this with something. My version of that program up at my deploy location, I can also look at. That's the previous version, right? Because it hasn't synced yet. And if I come down to Project Explorer, if I want this to be sent up there and get ready, I can click on Deploy Project. You can see it bottom right. Actually, probably behind my head. <laughs> it's deployed it up. It's synced it. So now if I open this version in the IFS... Ta-da! There's the new version of the code, synced easily up to the IFS location. So just having this kind of view layout, I find really useful. And of course, the next video will go into copying the stuff from here down. It's easy. It's just a right-click, download, and go to the place you want to put it. Um, and we'll talk about building the rules files, and we'll talk about all the other details that are going on here. The next thing I'll probably talk about is bash profile and bash rc which sets the um path for that helps make the run compile work um, but we'll get into that in the next do you want to install the recommended make file tools extension from microsoft for the make file language i don't know is the short answer but then again i did say you should always take the recommendations so i'm going to say yes install it off you go it can't hurt can it so yeah come with me and uh, enjoy this fun um, way of exploring VS Code. The more I play of it, the more I like it. Um, but I don't like it as much as I like the idea of a cold beer, which is outside, poolside, ready for me now. So um, I'll see you tomorrow when I come back and record a video actually doing some proper coding and running the uh, compiles online for VS Code. So enjoy your Saturday afternoon or whatever day it is, and I'll see you next time.